everyone. I am going to make a video to show you some ticks and trips that we have learned by using Zoom over the past few years for webinar. I know a lot of people are new to this and can cause some stress and I can guarantee you that every mistake that's been made on Zoom, we've done it live in front of hundreds of people. So that's tip one is just explain away your errors because chances are you, the SLP and the parent on the other line is new. So let's start with uh, the camera and what we're looking at. So I'm looking at a camera on my computer, which is super fine. And the first thing I want to tell you is to put a light source off to your side. So I've got a lamp. I turn the lights off into the room and I took the lamp off and this is kind of to my side. If this is behind the camera, uh, you can see that it messes up my glasses if you wear glasses. If you have a light behind you or an open door, that's going to shine in and you're probably going to look uh, very religious, maybe with a halo. It's a good look. And if I turn on this overhead light, it looks like uh, looks just as bad. So, uh, I was just on a webinar with someone who had a, how do you like that? Look at that. It's like a saint, right? Uh, lastly, so that has to do with the light. Really simple. I just took the lampshade off, put it in front of me. Uh, it's raining here, so it's super dark. And then the other part is to make sure that you can see your shoulders. If I go like this and I talk with my hands, I end up looking like a parakeet. So make sure that you've got a good... Um, kind of silhouette of your body that's playing. Okay, so let's hop over to Zoom. Okay, so here we are. I'm not gonna talk about everything that you can do in Zoom. What I wanna cover in this video are the biggest mistakes that can easily be made within the software. So I'm gonna schedule a new meeting and I'm gonna choose the time and date and here's what you want unchecked. So if you check required, that's gonna make them go through two processes of getting in. So when we use this for our SLP Impact website, when people are registering for a, a webinar that's coming up, it makes complete sense that they would come here and have to register. But if you're just talking about a therapy session or something, you don't want to send people through this rigmarole. So make sure that that's unchecked. The second thing is that to make sure if you're planning therapy, you can require uh, have the meeting recurring. With uh, the issues that people have been going on with Zoom bombing, you probably want to require a meeting password, especially if you're talking about kids and private stuff with, in therapy, we often are. Uh, you want to put your name and the child's name in the title. If you have numerous meetings, which we have a whole staff using Zoom, and it says my meeting 20 times down, or it says Brandon, and me and a colleague also have Brandon. So I'm going to do like Brandon and Scott therapy, something like that. The next thing you want to do is, uh, this is pretty important. So if you come down, you want to enable join before host. So what that means, you all have been on webinars where uh, you go and it looks like it's broken. If the parent gets there beforehand because they're trying it out, you want them to go in and kind of hang around. But you want to uncheck enable waiting room. So what happens here is if the people come into the waiting room when you're inside Zoom, you have to authorize and let each of them in individually, which I'm going to show you in a minute, it's hidden in the chat function. And if you're just hanging out waiting for your parent about to text them, you may not know that uh, they're waiting entry, where if you unclick that, when they hit the link, they just jump in. And then whether you do or you don't want to record the meeting. Okay, save, make sure I got all that. This thing you can uncheck too, because oftentimes they can't find their mute. So uncheck mute so that you can begin talking and they can begin talking. Okay, so we're going to say then we come up to the invite. So if you're texting, if you hit copy the invite, you get both the password and the link and you can grab this 
And you can go out to an email and say, hey, Scott Pratt's inviting you for a scheduled meeting, or you can change it to Vietnamese or Spanish or whatever you need to. If you're texting too, you can grab this. And typically, you could just email it to yourself. And then if you're doing this on a computer, otherwise, if you're pulling it up on a phone, you can go and grab that and send that in a text to your parents. Okay, so let's schedule this puppy and let's start it. Okay, so for my last set of tips, we're going to talk about what's going on inside this thing and typically where people can goof up. So here we go. I've got things down here and here's my video and here's my audio. So first thing to know is that if there's a red X, they can't hear you, they can't see you. And if they can't, you're having difficulties, you can come out here and sometimes see that the microphone's in the wrong place or maybe the video's in the wrong place. Okay, for those of you using a green screen, you can choose a virtual background, right, which can be fun, especially if, if you have kids. You can choose that one. Let's, let's do Star Wars. All right. So now if I start my video, okay, because I'm videotaping while I'm videotaping, a little existential issue here, it's not allowing me to start my video. So that's totally fine. I can show you the rest of the button. So you want to unmute yourself as soon as you're in. So when we do meetings or what we're doing, we'll have three things open. So you want to come here and click on participants. And if this isn't you, I am not Ellen. I'm going to change this there. You can also uh, put your image there if you need to. The next thing I want open is the chat because oftentimes when parents come in, they don't know or they can't hear and you can type here. Okay, so three things. We got participants, got chat, and then we have our screen. Again, you have an option to record here. Next thing I want to talk about is sharing screen. This is a big one and it was probably the biggest goof that we did uh, as far as uh, working with other people is I'm going to go share screen and this pops up and it gives me all these different options of what I want to share. I want to click this box if I'm doing anything audio or visual because otherwise if I play a video or YouTube or anything off my computer they won't be able to hear it. Option uh, optimize screen sharing uh, I don't think that's too important. So typically to make things simple, I'm just going to do share screen. So here's the thing. Hopefully you see the black zoom bar on the bottom of my screen. Notice that down here, Excel, PowerPoint, all this stuff is closed and as many windows as you can close because um, you basically, if this goes away, especially on Apple's, you have a hard time finding it. So right now people are, are watching my screen. And I'm going to go out to something else, share that, you know, whatever I'm talking about. I can go out to, you know, share whatever it is that I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to show you a trick in PowerPoint. A lot of people have been building their slides through PowerPoint and what they're using, which is totally cool. But the last tip today is that there's a super cool function within PowerPoint. Let's pretend that this is my, this is images of a book or this is therapy, what I'm going to do. If I go to here, it goes to full screen and I can't see my chat or, or what's going on, right? So if I go to slideshow, set up slideshow, and Apple can do this too, but it's a little bit different. I'm going to do browse by individual kiosk, click OK, and then I'm going to shrink that down, okay? So then this, the person's, if I go to share then and I share that, okay, what they're seeing 100% of their screen is that. And what I can do then is open my participants so I know if they fall off the call. And I can also click here more and open my chat and put that here. So if they have a message, they can talk, okay? Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about is basically everything that I just said 
you need to say to the parent or someone that's new with Zoom. So the first time that I meet with a parent, I'll say, hey, we're gonna meet at whatever time. Can I get on for a little while to make sure this works? Because it's been problematic, especially for, think about us, but parent, parents and people who don't have uh, options for this. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that they can see your screen, they can hear you. You wanna to try to play a video or some music you may not use it in your first session, but it's good to know about. And you want to show them where the chat is and you want to chat back and forth with them. And then let them know and give them a level of comfort that, hey, when we do this at three o'clock tomorrow, this is what you'll do. Uh, you'll come, you'll jump in this link that I sent you in a text and we'll jump in. All right.